So I ever wonder how like humanist values play out in a place like India oh. with, you know, all its rich traditions and, and deep rooted beliefs. Yeah, it's a fascinating dynamic. We're uh, we're diving into that today. Okay. With uh with Manava Vikasa Vidika, M V V for short. M V V. They're doing some some really fascinating work um in Hyderabad. Yeah, what's striking about M V V is uh their direct approach, you know. Okay. To tackling these social issues that I think a lot of people shy away from. Right. Um, they're not just talking about humanism. They're they're living it. Mm -hmm. And in a place where those two things don't always uh, go hand in hand. Right. It's it's pretty significant. Yeah, absolutely. So their mission statement, right? It's all about promoting human development. Mm -hmm. What does that what does that actually look like in action? What kind of issues are we are we talking about here? So imagine like tackling a system as deeply ingrained as the caste system. Right. Or challenging the influence of religion in everyday life. Mm -hmm. MVV yeah. advocates for a secular society, which mm. is a uh, a bold stance in the Indian context. Wow, yeah, that's that's taking on some some pretty big things. That is. So it's about creating a more a more inclusive society. Yeah. But how how do they actually go about doing that? What's what's their approach? So they they translate these values into action through a really um you know, practical approach. Okay. They've established different branches, what they call wings. Okay. That focus on various aspects of um of social change wings i like that yeah so what are some of these wings and what kind of work do they do they actually do so they have everything okay. from a marriage bureau to a youth group mm -hmm. humanitarian aid training center wow even a magazine and an online school okay each wing is designed to promote humanist values in um in tangible ways that's that's quite a range it is okay let's 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 break down a few of these okay. the marriage bureau for instance what what makes it stand out Sure. So it's called Navataram Pelivedika. Okay. And it directly challenges deeply rooted traditions like dowry, which has been a huge problem in India for for centuries. Mm -hmm. They promote marriages that are anti caste, anti religious, and um, and crucially anti dowry. That's a that's a powerful statement. So they're not just talking about equality. They're they're facilitating it in a very very real way. Exactly. What about this magazine you mentioned? Oh right, yeah. What what's that all about? So it's called Swekalachana, which translates to free thought. Okay. Um, it's published monthly and um, features articles exploring rationalism, critical thinking, you know, social justice, mm -hmm. all through a humanist lens. That's so interesting. So they're they're providing a platform for these ideas, which really speaks to their their commitment to open dialogue. Absolutely. What about some of the other wings? I mean, we only have time to to scratch the surface here. Right, right. But I'm I'm curious to hear more about you know what they actually do. Well, let's take the youth group as an example. Okay. Um, it's called Yuva Vidika. Okay. And it's all about empowering young people to think critically. Okay. They have debates, workshops, um even social awareness campaigns, all geared towards nurturing a generation that, you know, questions the status quo. It sounds like they're really they're really equipping young people with the the tools to to challenge traditional ways of thinking and become like agents of social change themselves. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And this focus on education extends to their online school, um, Vigya Vinika. OK. They offer courses on a variety of topics mm -hmm. like um, science, philosophy, and of course, humanism, right? Making these ideas accessible to a wider audience, yeah. you know, beyond geographical limitations. It's incredible how they're using like all these different avenues, you know, from marriage to education to to promote their message. Mm -hmm. But what what does it actually mean to be a humanist in this context? Yeah. I feel like we hear that word a lot. But what is it? What does it actually like look like at MVV? Um, at its core, humanism is all about you know human potential. Uh -huh. And uh, and responsibility. Okay. It emphasizes um, reason, compassion, mm -hmm. and the pursuit of a better world for everyone, without you know relying on on religious doctrines or supernatural beliefs. Okay, so it's about like grounding your values in a sh in a shared human experience, not not just dogma. Exactly. And MVV is putting these values into practice in in really concrete ways. Yeah, and and that resonates with a lot of people. In yeah. fact, MVV um, openly invites okay anyone who shares these values to join their movement. That's fantastic. So so how does one become a member? Is it just a matter of showing up? 
or is there is there more too? Well, they they, they want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Right. Okay. So first, you dive into their manifesto. Okay. It lays out their uh, their core principles mm -hmm. and gives potential members a clear idea of what they stand for. Makes sense. So you so you know what you're getting into. Right. What happens then? Secret handshake. Not quite. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you resonate with their mission, you uh, you apply for membership. Okay. Then there's a small fee, which uh, which helps support their various activities and and initiatives. It's interesting. You wouldn't think something as as seemingly simple as like a marriage bureau or a youth group would would require much funding. Right. How do they How do they manage the financial side of things? Well, they're incredibly transparent. Okay. Which is uh, which is crucial when you're dealing with with social issues as as sensitive as these. Right. Um, they rely heavily on donations. Okay. But they're upfront about where that money goes. Mm -hmm. Their website even mentions that their accounts are audited annually. Okay, so no no shadowy backroom deals going on here. No, not at all. What about this income tax exemption they mentioned? Oh yeah. What's that all about? So in India. Donating to certain nonprofits like MVV mm. makes you eligible for tax deductions under uh, Section 80G of the income tax rules. Um, it basically incentivizes people to to contribute to organizations doing you know doing good work. So you're giving back to the community and potentially saving a little on taxes. Win win. Exactly. It sounds like they've really thought this through. Yeah, they've um, they've definitely made it easy for people to to support them financially. Okay. They offer. Uh, direct bank transfers, mm -hmm. QR code payments, even mobile payments through uh, UPI. Wow. You know, it speaks to their commitment to accessibility and transparency, mm -hmm. ensuring their work reaches as many people as possible. We've talked a lot about what MVV does. Right. But I'm curious about, like, the why behind it all. Yeah. What what drives this dedication to promoting humanist values in in India specifically? Yeah. It's a it's a fascinating question, isn't it? Hmm. I think MVV recognizes that India, for all its progress, still grapples with these you know deeply ingrained social hierarchies, right? And and traditional beliefs mm -hmm. that that can uh, hinder individual freedom and and well being. So it's about challenging those norms that might you know hold people back, especially when those norms are are often intertwined with with religion or caste. Precisely, and they're doing it not through like, you know, forceful opposition. Right. But by by offering an alternative. Okay. A different way of of seeing the world mm. and and our place in it. Okay. Um, it's about empowering individuals to, you know, to think for themselves, mm -hmm. make their own choices and and shape their own destinies. That's that's really powerful. But it's one thing to like offer an alternative. It's another to actually see it like resonate with people right have they have they been successful in in gaining traction well you know they've been around since 2004 oh, okay which is uh quite testament to their their commitment yeah and in that time they've you know managed to build a network of like-minded individuals mm -hmm. establish these different wings right create real impact you know on the ground that's that's almost two decades of challenging the status quo it is i'm curious what kind of like long-term impact do you think MVV's work could have on Indian society? It's hard to say for sure. Yeah. But I think their efforts, you know, they plant these seeds mm -hmm. for a more inclusive and equitable future. Yeah. And even if they just change one mind at a time. Right. Those ripples, they can spread outwards. Imagine a generation, you know, growing up with, with access to education. Mm-hmm free from the constraints of dowry or caste. Right. Embracing reason and compassion. Right. That's a that's a powerful vision, I think, for the future. Absolutely. It's it's inspiring to see how MVV is like paving the way for for that kind of change, even if it's, you know, a gradual process. Mm -hmm. This deep dive has really um, opened my eyes to a side of India I, I wasn't familiar with. It's a side of India that's often overlooked, but it's, you know, it's definitely there, mm -hmm. growing growing stronger and, and more vocal. Yeah. And it reminds us that the pursuit of uh, a more just and equitable world, you know, it transcends geographical boundaries. Mm hmm and cultural context. It certainly does. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Okay. But this has been a fascinating look at MV and the work that they're doing. It has. So, listeners, we encourage you to continue exploring this topic. Yeah, definitely. We'll, uh, we'll include some links in the show notes so you can learn more. Sounds good. Until next time.